So this is it completely tented in. So this top hauler material is now covering everything. So it's fully, fully watertight. Which I mean, if you actually properly think about it, when you say six grand on scaffolding, you're like, nah, surely not, that's ridiculous. Well, it's 60 foot front to back. You've obviously got to think about the materials to do all of this. Always, always hold on with one hand. But yeah, you've got to think all the materials to do this, but not just that. You've also got four scaffolders on site for four days it adds up and that you've they've got to make profit otherwise there's literally no point in doing it i was asking on the scaffolders how much this weighs see this and there is one two three four of them they have to put it all together and then lift it and drag it across the roof and it weighs well over 100 kg and when i was watching them do it there was one scaffold at that end and another scaffold at that end, holding 100 kg over a 60 foot gap, which is just insane. Um, so yeah, I'll happily pay someone to do that instead of me. Also, if you're thinking it's a little bit sketchy just walking along, around on your roof, it's not that sketchy because if I fall, I'm just gonna roll down my roof, which probably wouldn't be that pleasant, but, I'm only gonna land on scaffolding there and then scaffolding there, even though the trap door's open. This is the ridge. This is the front of the house. And we are gonna be re-roofing the whole front, putting new rafters in. What's a rafter? Just think the R in rafter, roof. They're the pieces of wood that will run. Basically, imagine where that lead is, just below the tiles, run down. But yeah, you can see all the lifts that are needed. So there's one two three four on the front four at the back so yeah six grand a lot of money but you can actually see where it's gone um we're actually quite high up here we're taking everything off so all of these concrete tiles are coming off uh there's nothing wrong with them i just don't think they look very nice and because this is going to be having um the pitch increased a little bit the ridge is being raised to about there so you get a little bit more head height. So that means all the concrete tiles are gonna to have to come off anyway. Um, instead of just bending them into a skip, which I mean, all of these combined, yeah, it's probably gonna fill quite a lot of a skip, including all of these. We put a thing on Facebook Marketplace. Someone who buys and sells them said he would come and pick them all up for free, which means I don't have to pay to get rid of them. What are we gonna be retiling it with? Well, if you see next door there, They've got nice slates. We're gonna be doing the same here with some, I don't know, Welsh slates, I think. Very expensive, but they look nice. So we're gonna be doing that on the front. On the back side, obviously, just think about it. Let me just sit here. It is essentially going to be a flat roof running out all the way to there. That's it. So that means that we can just use some sort of membrane um or put what it's called on the screen i can't remember it right now um but yeah that is really good for saving money because you don't need everywhere in nice slate because who's going to be looking at the top of the roof just like on the roof of the pod which if you remember from the plans it's this entire section raised up going across there um one bedroom and an ensuite here and then here, right now, have some vision. I am stood 
directly over the ensuite. There'll be a skylight there, another one there, and I think a third skylight over there. Um, and over here would be the staircase that's coming up to the master bedroom, which is going to be up here. The bed would be over that side, Juliet balcony on the flat side over there, which is going to look sweet. And then we're going to have another skylight here, letting loads of light down onto the stairs. But I mean, ow, shit, my head. But yeah, to give a sense of scale, I mean, that's going to be a massive room. A bed is nowhere near the width of that, so it's getting very, very exciting. I've got two labourers coming to strip the roof um, tomorrow, which I mean, I think it will probably take one, two, three days. Um, to get someone to strip it. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be absolutely insane. I don't know if I'll leave this in the video, but I did just want to say that whatever it is you're going for in life, whatever dream, aspiration, like if, if you're building your dream home as your thing, getting into property, um, like I always say, if you just want to open a bakery and that's your dream, that's your definition of success. If you just go for it, give it your everything, no matter what anyone says, no matter if anyone tells you you're being unrealistic or whatever, if you just go for it, make a plan, stick to it, literally anything is possible because what my brother and me are doing right now, like this house, my brother and me always knew it. Like I'll put on the screen right now, my laptop background was a photo when in back in like 2015 of an Audi RS6 because that was my dream car. And the backdrop to it is the city. There's the Shard, the London Eye, everything. Um, and when my brother and me were viewing this house, we were like, I think we're on top of a hill here, which means I'm pretty certain we're gonna be able to see the city. We just thought it could have a really cool view. And then once, as soon as we put the scaffolding up, we pretty much ran up here as soon as it started getting dark. And yeah, you can just see the whole of the city. Um, it doesn't come across on camera as well as it does with your eyes. Um, I might need to get a better camera that can zoom in more. But um, yeah, it's crazy, it's crazy. So yeah, that was my background in 2015. And then now that will be the, basically the view out of the master bedroom, Juliet balcony of the city. So yeah, just keep going. The moment you want to give up on your dream, whatever, is probably the exact moment you need to give it your everything for another year. Um, and then the table suddenly turns after a year and then everyone starts calling you lucky. So yeah, life's weird like that. I need to film some more because, ooh. Nice car. Yeah, I wanna film a little bit more of the roof because this time tomorrow there is gonna to be no roof. I do just wanna say as well, if you are wondering how you find a scaffolder, what, like there's a million and one different companies out there. How do you know if it's a good one? How do you know if it's a fair price? Well, you've got to do your research and how to see if something's a fair price. You get multiple quotes for the same job. Just send them an email, send a plan of what you want to do, call them up, get them to come look around. We did it for four different scaffolding companies. They all came in pretty much at the same price. Um, we even called up my mate who has his own scaffolding business down south like Bournemouth Way. We got him to drive up, come quote for us, and it came in like 500 quid cheaper than the like local London scaffolders, basically. Um, so we just went with someone actually in London because the thing is, is once you get scaffolding put up, that's not it just done, um, depending on what you're having done. But with this roof, you're gonna need extra lifts put in. If you don't know what a lift is, every layer you can walk on. That's called a lift. Um, and obviously to reach certain places, you're gonna need extra lifts put in, which is not an issue. It comes in the price like, uh, well, it does for the example we did because we asked for it. Um, and they said, yeah, once you've paid that amount, if you want an extra lift put in something moving, you can just call us up and we'll sort you out. There's a set time period you can have scaffolding up for. Theirs is basically, you have it up as long as you want it for, um, the particular company I went with. 
as long as you don't take that out of Mick. Like obviously if I had this up for five years, then they're gonna come around and be like, what are you playing at? Giving me my scaffolding back. Cause I had like, all of this, all this metal, that's probably thousands of pounds. Like my mate who owns this business, he, his is very small and that's why like, he needs a lot of his stock to be kept at his yard so he can use it for his jobs. And obviously this would be using quite a lot of his stuff. But I asked him like, I gave him, asked him how much some scaffolding companies have in stock, like how much tubing and, and everything. And he was like, oh, millions and millions of pounds just sitting in their yards in metal. Because like, even if you think about all the boards, like I've never gone to a scaffolder and they've said, oh yeah, we can't fit you in. They've always got the materials in their yard, but then yet they have a hundred jobs going on at the same time. So yeah, big money in scaffolding because everyone always needs it. No one can do a loft conversion without scaffolding. Um, I mean, you could use a ladder, but it's not gonna be very safe. And it'll probably take you about five years to do. So yes, how do I feel about six grand? 6,150 pounds even. Um, not very good. I don't really like spending that sort of money, but can I do the loft conversion without <laughs> spending six grand on it? I could have saved a bit if I didn't do tin hat, but cause I'm sleeping below and the roof is coming off and this house costs that amount and it's gonna be worth, yeah, I'm not mucking about. Some people risk it with tarpaulin, but it's just the fact that we're doing the whole of the new pitch, raising the ridge. You can't just do a scaffolding at the front, scaffolding at the back and then some tarpaulin. And then obviously we've got the whole pod going on as well. I'll get onto the roofer in a future video because how we found this roofer is costing a lot less than, I mean, I know how much that person spent on their lot. And yeah, if I was paying that amount, I just feel like a mug, basically. Um, so yeah, there's gonna be a lots of value coming your way with how to save a ton of money. And unfortunately, this isn't a video where you can see you're saving a lot of money because there are certain things that is just a fixed cost. You have gotta pay it. I needed all of this. Two laborers are coming to strip the roof. So I guess I'm gonna do some like weekly updates on what's going on and some bits I'm just gonna chuck in there that I'm doing at the same time. Like for example, I've lowered the entire basement and I was thinking like, should I film it in like a separate video to do with the basement or should I chuck it in at the end of other videos? I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm pretty new to the whole filming stuff um, and like editing in general, it takes me a while still to edit. But yeah, if you are new, please subscribe and yeah, next video, roof and the brick block work on the extension and putting the lintel in. So a lot coming on that, a lot of money saved as well. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Don't worry. This was once up there. That is all crumbling. So yeah, up to the halfway point. Cut that off. And then every single floor down. So I'm gonna have to be pulling out that. Which, yeah, that's probably a skip worth of bricks and crap that's gonna come out of that. 